What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys the first 13 things I did after unboxing my brand new Samsung Galaxy S8. This right here is the Midnight Black S8 Plus and if you missed the unboxing I did this morning, make sure to go ahead and check that out. It's in the cards right now and also down in the description below. All right, so now let's talk about the first 13 things I did on my Galaxy S8 and the things I recommend you do after you unbox it and go through the initial setup process. So the very first thing I didn't actually do yet just because I'm doing this on video, but the first thing I recommend you do is get a screen protector for your S8. Eight. I got this two pack of liquid skin protectors right here for the S8 Plus and I'm gonna have the link for this down in the description below if you want to pick one up on Amazon but the first thing I'd recommend you do is put a screen protector on this screen it's so beautiful you don't want to ruin it and in addition to a screen protector I'd also recommend you get a case I got a Spigen case right here I'm also gonna have this down in the description below and the reason I recommend you getting a case is because especially if you get the midnight black version I can just tell there's gonna be so many micro abrasions and so many like scratches on this back part it's really similar to the jet black iPhone 7 so I definitely recommend you get a case and a screen protector on your device as soon as possible like I said the screen is so beautiful and you don't want to ruin it with some scratches on day one or anytime in the first week really let's just move this stuff to the side and the second thing I would do is disable auto brightness and just mess with some of the display settings so I have my settings right here let's go ahead to the settings and then we're gonna to go to display then you have your brightness right there which you can adjust if you want then you have auto brightness auto brightness is what I always disable first on every device I get auto brightness is known for killing battery not really killing battery but it does have an effect negatively on the battery if you do keep auto brightness enabled I'd recommend you just manually turn down the brightness if you need to or manually turn it up if you need to and then if you scroll down a little bit you have the LED indicator as well so you can disable the LED indicator which actually shows up in the top left you could disable that if you want I'm not going to disable it just yet but I'm going to kind of play around with it and I know it's there to disable if I need to and then we have screen timeout down here I have mine set to 10 minutes just because I never forget to lock my phone so I really wish there was a, a none option like there is on iOS OS but there is not so 10 minutes is the max so that means that after 10 minutes my screen will lock it's set to 15 seconds by default and you could just change this if you want I'd recommend you change it to at least a minute or two minutes but it just depends kind of on your usage style and how you use your phone and if you remember to lock your device all the time or not you do also have smart stay if you did want to use the 15 seconds I would recommend turning on smart stay as well and the next thing I would do is enable the max resolution available on the Samsung Galaxy S8 so as you can see here we have the screen resolution if we click on that we're still in the display settings by the way screen resolution you can see there it's set by default at just 1080 but you want to bump it up to the quad HD plus display you always want to have the maximum resolution possible especially when it's being so you know it's marketed everywhere and everybody's talking about this maximum you know quad HD plus display so you want to have that enabled just so you can get the full resolution out of your device of course you could change it down to 1080 and even 720 if you want if you're running low on battery or something like that but of course, everybody's gonna want the max resolution possible. The next thing to do is go into settings and go down to lock screen and security. And then you're gonna set up possibly the iris scanner, the fingerprint scanner, the facial recognition, whatever you wanna set up, set up some type of security on your device. So as you can see here, I registered my iris right there and I also have a fingerprint scanner. And of course, I do have a pin code as well. So of course, I can't do facial recognition right now, otherwise I would, but I have been using iris scanner and I really like the iris scanner, especially where the fingerprint sensor is. It's kind of a pain sometimes to use that fingerprint sensor. So so it's nice to have the iris scanner and then also my pin as other ways to get into my device and the next thing I did is went to the Play Store and installed all of my favorite applications so this is what you should definitely do when you first get your device install you know Spotify Twitter Facebook Instagram snapchat whatever you want to install make sure to go ahead and install your favorite applications as soon as possible so you can get the most out of your device and start using it like you used your old phone and then of course after you install those applications you're gonna to want to move around all your applications and customize the look of your home screen so as you can see here I moved my applications to the front screen here and I actually minimize this so you can change this you can change the size by just doing like that you could change the width you know whatever you want you could just change the position as you can see I put the search bar up at the top and then the weather below that and then my applications it just looks a lot cleaner in my opinion I definitely wouldn't stick to the default layout that they want you to have on here I would definitely customize it to your own liking it's gonna look a lot better the next thing you should do after getting your Samsung Galaxy S8 is removing some of the bloatware and some of the pre-installed applications so carriers pre-install applications on your device that bloat up the device and just cause lag and just unwanted notifications so I definitely recommend removing some or all of these applications for example I don't want this Empire game right here so I'm just gonna tap and hold and then click uninstall and click OK to completely uninstall it we have others over here like game of war mobile strike I don't want any of those and then this Verizon folder you can't actually delete the pre-installed applications from your carrier but you can disable them so if you go ahead and tap and hold 
and then disable, it will disable them right there. And as you can see, it removes it from that folder or wherever it was on your screen. So definitely go ahead and do that as soon as possible. The next thing you should do is install a custom theme or wallpaper. I chose to do a wallpaper. So as you can see here in the theme store right here, we have all these different wallpapers you can choose from. Just go ahead and tap on one. You just go ahead and hit download down here in the bottom right. Oh, this is actually a 99 cent one. So you may want to uh, filter this by the top free. If you go here and you go to free and you find one that you want, go ahead and click on that click download, then you can go ahead and apply it to the home screen, lock screen, or home screen and lock screen. This is just another one of those awesome ways to spruce up your device. As you can see here, I have a background right there. I have a wallpaper. I didn't install a theme. I didn't really like any of the themes that I saw, but this is a really nice wallpaper that really makes it look, you know, not as default, not fresh, so fresh out of the box, which is what should be your main goal after you get this device. You don't want it to look like everybody else is out there. The next thing you should do is set shortcuts in your settings. So if you go ahead to settings right here, you'll notice at the very top, I have all these different shortcuts for different configurations the different settings panels inside of my settings application. And how I did this was just at the top here, you just go ahead and click edit. And you can choose which ones you want to be up there for shortcuts. You can choose up to nine different shortcuts. So say I wanted to add ringtone and do not disturb up there, just go ahead back and you'll see that they show up right there. This is just a great way to quickly access certain settings panels inside of your device without having to scroll down and go through different sections inside of settings. It makes it really quick and easy to get to these certain sections. So Bixby, which is the new voice assistant, isn't actually ready for the big time yet, but we do have what's called Bixby Home. So if we go ahead and press on the Bixby button, you can see it takes us to this page right here, which shows us all these different cards, which is like my schedule, today's activity, upcoming reminders, the weather, the themes, all this good stuff, it'll show like news and everything. It's a pretty cool alternative until Bixby actually starts working, but you can actually customize this whole section. If you go ahead and click the settings icon here, hello Bixby cards, and you can select exactly which cards you want to show up in this section. And then you can also change it on the lock screen here as well. And then if you go to supported apps, you can even find some apps that you can download in the Google Play Store right here. So if you go ahead and download those, you will be able to see those on the Bixby home screen. So since Bixby isn't ready just yet, we're gonna wanna have some type of voice assistant on our device. And that's where we're gonna use Google Assistant. We're gonna set that up right now. So if you go ahead and tap and hold on the home button, you can see that the Google Assistant pops up. If we go ahead and hit continue. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. There you go. So you just have to say, okay, Google, turn on trusted voice. Go ahead and hit done. Done. And as you can see there, we have Google Assistant set up. So you can either tap and hold on the home button to initiate uh, Google Assistant, or you can just tap the little microphone button there on the search to the right of the search right there. And of course you can also say, okay, Google. Hi, I'm your Google. What day is August 21st? The 21st of August 2017 falls on a Monday. So you can see there we have Google Assistant, which can come in handy very often. And even when Bixby does get polished a little bit more, I still feel like Google Assistant will be more, you know, it'll be more trustworthy and more reliable than Bixby will. It's gonna take a, at least a couple years for Bixby, you know, to really catch up with Google Assistant, if ever. The next thing is customizing the always on display. So if you go to settings, lock screen and security, and then always on display, go ahead and click on that. And then you have these different clock styles to choose from. You'll notice on mine when I go ahead and lock my device, you'll see that it's actually a calendar here instead of the time, which is the time is by default. As you can see there, I have a calendar, and my notifications right under it. And this is where you can actually customize that and you can customize it to your liking. So if you wanted an analog clock there, if you wanted a world clock, if you wanted an image, or if you wanted the edge clock, you just go ahead and tap on it to get a little preview there. As you can see over there, we have like the edge clock over there. You can apply that if you wanted. You could change the position, the color, and things like that. And then you have the option to just turn always on display off and you can always have show always on or off as well. And the final thing you should do when you first get your Samsung Galaxy S8 is adjust the sound settings. If you go ahead and turn your volume up or down, you'll have this little arrow up in the top right and you can change the sound for the ringtone, the media, the notifications, and the system. So if I go ahead and turn this up, I personally like having my notifications lower volume than anything else on my device, especially the ringtone. So I'm gonna turn that down. I'm gonna turn the media up a little bit more than the ringtone, but I'm gonna have notifications down more than anything else just because I really don't like hearing loud notifications. So this is really handy to adjust all these sounds on your device. So there you have it guys. Those are some of the first things I did and some of the first things I recommend you doing after you get your brand new Samsung Galaxy S8. So I'm sure there's other important settings and things to set up on your Samsung Galaxy S8 when you first get it that I didn't cover, but this is just kind of what I did and what I recommend after doing some research as well. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for a lot more Samsung Galaxy S8 coverage and comparisons to the iPhone 7 Plus. But thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you soon.